Hey there, this is Unmesh and in this video we are going to learn how to fit any image to any shape in Photoshop. It can be a shape, it can be an object, it can be a text, it can be any other image. It's going to be amazing and I have lined up one, two and three examples for you to show how you might use it very creatively. And at the end of the video, I have a surprise for you. So make sure you stay on till the end and without any further ado, let's get started. But before we begin, make sure you hit that red button to get more videos like like this in future not so talked about Photoshop tutorials in an amazing way so let's hit it So here we are in Photoshop and the first example that we are going to do is the text one. So the first thing that we need to do once you are in Photoshop is that you need to import the image that you need to confine to the text. So let's go ahead and import it. So I have already uh, a, a folder made for today's video. So let's import these two images. Just drag it in Photoshop and you're good to go. Now type the text which you want to confine the image to. But before we type, make sure you unlock the background layer. To do that, just click on the lock. It just unlocks the layer. Now, let's type whatever we want. Suppose we want to type green, right? Doesn't matter what the color of the text is because, again, it will be replaced by the foliage. So let's make it a little bigger. Yeah, I don't know why my Photoshop is a little slow today. Maybe the image size is too much. Anyway, so once you have done it, we need to center the text. I talked about it in my previous video. To center it, make sure the text layer is selected. Control A or Command A if you are using a Mac. Move tool, make sure the move tool is selected. Then this icon for centering it horizontally, center it vertically. And you're done. Next, what are you going to do? Move this layer above the text layer. Now you cannot see anything because the background layer, the foliage layer is above the text layer and text layer is beneath it, so you cannot see it. And now, the most important and exciting step, press and hold ALT or option if you're using a Mac and when you move the cursor between these two layers, you will see that the cursor has changed. It has changed to a box and an arrow. So when that cursor changes, all you need to do, you need to click <laughs> and you're done. And of course, it doesn't look fancy right now. Let's add a background color. To add a background color, create an adjustment layer. To do that, click on this icon and solid color. So whatever color you want, maybe white. And now also you cannot see anything because this layer is above all the other layers. So let's take this layer below and you're good. Let's move on to the next example. Let's do the same with this. It's all the same. Type in red. Let's make it a little bigger. We could have used a different font, but just for, yeah. There's one more tip I want to give you right now. If you're watching this video, you're very lucky. If you want to make the letters a little bit further, that's actually called tracking. All you need to do, you need to select the text. And the fastest way to select the text is double click on the T and you're good. Now, press and hold Alt or Option if you're using a Mac, left arrow key to make it closer, right arrow key to make it further. Isn't that cool? So I would make it a little bit this way and do the same step, unlock it, move it above it, do it. Let's add a background color. Actually, you might want to add the background color before doing all this because then it adds the background color above all the layers and you have to move it back down. So do that before this, okay? It's fine. Now let's move on to our second example which is really exciting and will really compel you to do it right now. So first, let's import the image. So I have opened the folder, just drag it in Photoshop, here, right. One thing to make notice of is that it's a transparent image. It has a transparent background. It does not have a white in the background or any other color in the background. So we need to add a background color. To add a background color, the same thing. Why? Okay. Now, you can always go ahead and change the color if you want double click on this and you can change the color, but I want to keep it white. Now, this method will not work if this layer, the shape layer, is not differentiated from the background. If this comes with white, had this come with white, you wouldn't have been able to do that. There are different steps for it, okay? 
you need to make sure the object that you want to confine your images to or any kind of shape or image or splash or anything that you want to confine your images to is on a separate layer and it is transparent. It does not come with a background. Okay, now let's move back. Let's import an image of a boy. If you were there, I would have imported your image. But anyway, and let's make it a little bigger to fit the size of the brush stroke, right? Okay, and once you do that, do the same steps, press and hold alt between these two layers, and you're good. And you can actually move the image to see what looks good to you. For example, select this layer and you can drag it right and left the way you want it, okay? Amazing, isn't it? Now, it doesn't actually look like it had been painted with the brush. Yes, it does have the outline. It does have all the grungy effect around the corners and in the middle, but it just looks like a mirror. Somebody had just done that. Somebody wiped a brush in the mirror, a dusty mirror. So what if you want to add the effect of the brush? So that's not a part of the tutorial, but let's do it. Make sure that layer is a smart object. It's already a smart object, but if it's not, right click and click convert to smart object. It's already a smart object, but I did it again. What are the advantages of smart object? Well, we'll understand that. So when I go to filter and go to filter gallery and apply filter one by one. So suppose I want to apply this filter angled strokes and it's pretty fine. I'm yeah. And I'm satisfied with the filter. It's taking time because the image is too big. It's about 5,000 pixels wide. So let's click. Okay and it's applying the filter. And since the image is big, and since the filter is intricate and heavy, it's taking a little time to load and apply the filter. And it's still applying, we just have to wait. As you can see, now the filter has been applied and it does look very cool, but what if you change your mind? What if you don't want a filter? What if you want to, wanted to change the values of the brushes? What if you want to make the brush a little bit bigger? then if that wasn't a smart object, you would be in big trouble. But since it's a smart object, you can always go ahead, double click on the filter gallery and change the values. Also, if you press this, this will turn off the effect. Now let me explain how that will benefit you. Suppose you applied the effect and this wasn't a smart object and you say that, okay, I'll just undo, undo, undo and just uh, uh, reverse the effect and just apply it again the way I want. But there's a catch. What if you went ahead, you liked it, you liked the effect at the first moment, you went ahead and added text, added a lot of designs, did everything, worked hours behind the image and then you want to change the effect then going undo will cost you all the hard work that you did. So it's better to do non-destructive editing whenever in Photoshop. So let's move into our third and final example. And in this example, you'll learn an amazing trick out of the box, out of the syllabus, okay? In the third, let's create a portrait. So I'll go to file, let's close this. It's kind of heavy on the CPU. I'll go to file new and let's create a portrait. So I'll select photo and I'll create a portrait, 8 is to 10, this size is good, let's create that. All right, now, I want a nice background. What do I do? Will I go to images.google.com and search for it? Will I open my browser, download the image, import the image? No, we are smart people, we don't do that. We'll use a plugin called Pexels and that's completely free. I have made a separate video about the plugin with which you can directly import free stock images into Photoshop. All right, so let's activate the plugin by going to Windows, ooh, Extensions and Pexels. All right, so here's the plugin. I'll click it and I'll type background. Let's see what comes. Uh, I want a nice background. I'm looking for a nice grayscale background. And there it is. That's the one I was looking for. Yep, I'll just click it. And it does just simply imports it, simply imports it as a layer in your project. So let's turn off the clipping mask, yeah. And there you have the background. Now, 
what if you want to draw the object and you want to add the image to that object suppose you want to draw a circle so as I showed you in the example I'll take a circle right I'll draw it and to draw a perfect circle instead of an oval or an ellipse hold shift key and then draw the circle this draws a perfect circle and, you, and to change the color fill I'll change the color let's make give it a color doesn't matter what color you give to it just to make it visible we are going to give it a color now let's remove the stroke we don't want the stroke let's tuck that back in and move it in the center or anywhere where you want it let's make it a little smaller yep and good okay now let's import an image so I'll go back to the folder Im image of this funny girl also for, for your knowledge I have just downloaded the image from the same plugin so this plugin is a must go ahead and watch that video about how to use that plugin in different scenarios I'll link that video in the card right here or here somewhere All right let's bring this above the circle do the same press and hold alt click in the middle amazing isn't it you can make it smaller bigger the way you want it the way you desire All right once you do, once you're satisfied. Now this looks okay, uh, but I wanna have this object, this element stand out from the background. The best way to do that is add a drop shadow, right click to the ellipse, make sure the ellipse uh, layer is selected, right click, go to blending options and click on drop shadows. And it added a shadow right here. You can increase, click here, you can increase the opacity, you can increase the distance, and you can increase the light source, but all that kind of cool stuff that you can do. Once you're satisfied, click OK. And your image is ready. You can always move it. Oh, sorry. You can always move it later to the place where it wanted to be. Now, when you move the circle, there's a problem. And what is the problem? the image stays in the same place I want both of them to move together what to do control all set okay I undo it now select both of these okay to select both of the layers press and hold controller command if you're using a Mac it's command press and hold click on both the layers and make a group of it control G or command G this makes a group and now when you select the group and go control T and now when you move it, everything moves together. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure you give us a thumbs up. And please, just, just please hit the red subscribe button. Okay, for more videos like this in future, I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Also, also, I remember my promise. Thank you for staying tuned and watching my videos till the end. Not a lot of people watch my video till the end. And I thank you so much. And thanks so much for that. And you're very special to me. And you must, you must be rewarded. And you deserve it, okay? So I have a link flashing right here. If you click on this link, you'll get access to 50 or 40, I'm not sure, 30, 40 more shapes like the one that I used in my second example. All of the shapes are high quality, very high resolution, 5,000, 4,000 pixels on the longest length, and all of them are transparent. But before you download, there, there's a disclaimer. And the disclaimer is, all these shapes, or transparent shapes or brush strokes, I haven't made them. Somebody else made it, and they are giving it for free, so I'm just giving you the link. All you have to do, you have to register with them, you have to give your email, and they will send you, they, like they sent me, 300, 300 megabytes of a collection of shapes. So make sure you get that before they start charging for it. So thanks a lot again for watching, this is Unmaged Inda signing off, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned, and stay tuned for surprises, okay? Next video, I won't notify you.